If you have no AI or machine learning experience and still want to become one, here's the secret. And I get it, that's where the future is going. My research was on 1,125 applicants. You gotta play smart and be strategic. Okay, I don't know who needs to hear this, but breaking into AI or machine learning engineering isn't going to be an overnight journey. I'm Jean, your trusted engineering mentor who's going to tell you the harsh reality about becoming an AI engineer in this climate. And trust me, you're not alone in this. Many people are just firing off countless cold applications and they're frustrated because they're not getting any responses. And let's be real, those AI machine learning job descriptions can feel like trying to decode a secret language, right? I know exactly what you're going through because I did some research. I looked at 39 LinkedIn job listings to help you decode the confusing mess of titles and expectations and experience levels. Companies just throw terms around, but the experience required varies widely. So for example, Figma is hiring a ML slash AI engineer no indication of the level in the title. But when you scroll to the requirement sections, you'll see that they want eight plus years of experience. According to levels that FYI, five to 10 years of experience is considered senior engineer, but Figma doesn't indicate that in the title. So how are you supposed to know that? So if you're well, unsure what the levels mean, watch my other video, Who Pays More Than Fang? I talk about the highest paying companies in tech based on levels. So reading through these job descriptions feel kind of like deciphering a secret code, which kind of is, I guess. It is a common challenge in the tech world trying to decode the lingo. Now, I've been working in tech for 17 years now, so I can help you translate this. Here's a breakdown. I looked at 15 AI ML openings, so 12 senior roles and 12 junior postings outside of AI slash ML. And when I say senior roles, I had the word staff, or senior in the title, and then the junior roles had words like entry, junior, or new grad, but not AI or ML. In this batch of 39 positions, there were 1,125 applicants. And as a premium LinkedIn user, this data just comes to me as a feature. I have no affiliation with LinkedIn, I just pay to use this feature. So what is the outcome? Drum roll, please. <laughs> uh, among junior roles, about half and half had bachelor's and master's degree, and 3% had PhD. Senior roles were about the same, except 5% had PhD, so 2% more than the junior roles. Now AI slash ML roles, on average of only about a quarter had a bachelor's degree, while over half had master's degree, and 11% had PhDs. Of the 24 non-AI ML junior and senior roles, only two explicitly mentioned the terms MS or PhD, which is about 8%. In contrast, 30% of AI ML positions mentioned either MS or PhD in the qualification section. I know it's confusing, <laughs> yes. We could discuss the need for standardized titles in job postings, but that would involve a long-term shift in the industry as a whole. For now, let's focus on the job hunting process for you. If you are actively job hunting now, it just means that you need to do a lot of reading. My research was on a small sample size, 1,125 applicants. So I checked out research on current AI slash machine learning engineers with PhDs. These are the people who got the job after applying. In 2019, 19% of data scientists held PhDs. In 2021 LinkedIn report, 28% of machine learning engineers had PhDs. Also, the AI index report from 2021 notes 45% increase in AI related PhDs granted from 2018 to 2019. So it only makes sense that more AI machine learning engineers have PhDs since more people graduating PhD do it in AI machine learning. Imagine climbing the Everest in sandals with no preparation or tools. That's kind of like trying to become an AI or machine learning 
learning software engineer with no experience overnight. And I have seen these videos or gurus claiming that you can become an AI or machine learning engineer overnight. Then you apply to hundreds of these roles and you can't land a single interview. Then you ask me, what am I doing wrong? Well, you're on the wrong path, my friend. And I get it. That's where the future is going. So here's the secret. If you have no AI or machine learning experience and still want to become one, you got to play smart and be strategic. So this is what you're going to do. First, start anywhere. You gotta get your foot in the door. Don't just wait around waiting for the perfect AI or machine learning role to appear magically. Competing with the PhDs for AI roles is like using brute force to open a safe. Try becoming any kind of engineer, full stack, iOS, web, whatever you pick, because they have better odds. The sooner you're employed, the sooner you start gaining real life industry experience, which is what counts the most when you're looking for a job. According to the 2023 Future of Jobs report, number one thing that companies care about is your past work. Second, they test your skills. Then third, they check your degrees. This means if you don't have prior work experience, you, you would need to ace your coding interview. But the catch is if you can't even pass the resume screening, you won't even get an interview, meaning you don't get the opportunity to demonstrate your coding abilities. And I've been there before landing my previous role at WhatsApp. I applied for over 300 jobs and got less than a dozen interviews. And that was a relatively active job market. So aim for roles with better interview odds. If your interviews are scarce, go for less competitive roles. And I mean, of course, if you're flooded with interviews, you go for the exciting roles. But in this tough job market, not everyone can really follow their passion. So when times are tough, you operate in a more practical mode and that's okay. And I say this because this is the third recession I have seen personally. You know, there was a 2000.com crash and then the 2007-8 financial crisis or the housing crashes. And this is the third time we're seeing a recession and there are always ups and downs in economy. We will recover, but for now, you just need to stay practical. At first, you may not land the most exciting AI roles or projects, but you can step up for AI projects later on. If your current company doesn't have any AI projects, you can take the initiatives, look for chances to automate manual tasks, propose solutions for actual workplace challenges, observe other people, what are people struggling with, and ease your way into the world of AI. If you pitch ideas that actually help people at your workplace, most likely your bosses are going to love it. You can also work on more side projects in AI. You know, I don't necessarily encourage people to work on side projects to get a job, but once you have a job, you can work on side projects, launch an app in the app store or build a website, but with real users. So you build your portfolio and experience working on these real life projects. Because remember, the number one thing companies are looking for, prior experience. So once you get your foot in the door, it's much easier to start gaining these experiences. You can work towards moving into the AI track. And if you're curious what languages you should be learning to be more competitive as a software engineer, watch my other video, Future Proof Your Tech Career Against Future, Future Proof Your Tech Career Against AI. But remember, your career is a marathon, not a sprint. So beware of shortcuts and guarantees. If anyone's promising that you can become an AI engineer in three steps, be aware because those are red flags. Success in AI will take time. So embrace the journey, focus on growth, and build your expertise over time.